Welcome to the Joshua Project Podcast. Man, I got to tell you, I don't get tired of saying that. I love doing this. And today, Joshua Project with friends is my friend Dave Hanzo. Hello. Dave, a lot of people know nothing about you. So, man, give us a little snapshot of who the Hanzo family is. Gosh, so we've done a whole bunch of things over our life, but I would say everything we've put our hands to has always been with the hope of inspiring other people that really normal people like us and them can use their life for big things. And so how that's mostly looked like is we're producers, we're film producers. So we've created feature length documentaries, a TV show. Uh, we worked in Uganda, Africa for eight years. We moved there to adopt our daughter and met this whole community of women uh, who didn't have jobs and who desperately needed them. And so we kind of saw like, oh, we could actually meet a need here. And within a couple of years, we had 120 employees and the organization grew really quick. And, and that's where we saw uh, that and realized like ultimately like normal people like us can actually change the world if, if, we, if we take risks and maybe even look a little silly to the people around us for a while. Um, normal people like us can actually do this. And so that started us on this journey to become filmmakers, to tell stories like this all over the world of people actually changing the world. So, Hey, I have to blame you guys for the reason that we are in Livingston, Montana. <laughs> um, but before we get to that, um, so I've known you for maybe like four years yeah, yeah, yeah. About yeah. four years. And so this is what I love about knowing somebody for such a short period of time is I get to go back and watch these films that you have produced and made and starred in. Um, and the reason that I love that is because I get to see you in skinny jeans and a V-neck and a cool guy <laughs> haircut. And I can gladly say you will never find a video of me like that. So. <laughs> It's true. I had really long hair. Ultimately, I think it was really just because nobody could cut hair when we lived in Africa for so long. And so my hair just kept growing and I kept looking more hipster every day. <laughs> well, you had said, and please correct me if I am wrong, but I believe it was in The Find from Africa. Um, you said something. Man, I can't tell you, Dave, how many times I've preached this from the pulpit. I will always give you credit. <laughs> um, but I've preached this more than a handful of times from the pulpit of be willing to look foolish or stupid in front of your friends or family rather than living the rest of your life with what if. Yeah. What if I did pick my family up and move to Africa? What if I did join the Free Burma Rangers? What if I actually used the voice that God gave me to share the good news? Wow, well, man. Yeah. I it scares me way more to have to be 80 years old one day and look back and have to wonder, man, what if we would have done that? That scares me way more than failing this year as we have ultimately, like we feel like God, we've heard God tell us to move to LA and we're not LA people. We're not at all like that. And um, for whatever that means, uh, but because both of our kids act and we work in film, we really feel like that's where we're supposed to be. And again, of moving to a place that costs two or three times the amount of money from where we live. Uh, it's crazy traffic, pandemic, <laughs> you know, one of the hot spots, all that. Um, yeah, I'd rather look dumb trying that. And in a year or two, even if that fails miserably, then I have to wonder what if. Amen to that. I think you guys are crazy for moving to LA. <laughs> Good, me too. <laughs> we met in Reading because I was sick of San Diego, and so we moved to Northern California. Um, yeah. But this is kind of in your guys' DNA. So take us back to the find. I think your son was quite young when you guys started filming there. Yeah. Yeah, so we we were – well, we got married when I was – night. 19 and 18. I, well, actually, I was 20 and 19, and we actually got married. We dated all through high school, my wife Morgan and I, and went into ministry full time, which is totally not in my background at all. Started working for an organization called Young Life and working with high schoolers, and um, that's actually how I came to the Lord when I was in high school. And and in that time, we had been I had been an area director in a small town in Colorado for three and a half years. Uh, we started the adoption process while our our biological son was two. 
Uh, we started the adoption process of a girl in Uganda, Africa, because we heard about this war that was going on in Africa, we, in Uganda specifically, um, and there was over 2 million orphans. And so we said, well, you know what, maybe we can't help uh, at 25 or 26 years old, we can't do a ton, but we can do this. And so we moved to Uganda, um, met our daughter, and then in that time frame, met this whole community of women that I referenced a little bit ago. Um, and yeah, our son was two when we moved there. And when we really quickly realized one of the more powerful things we were doing wasn't with the people we were working with, but it was simply just getting to share our story back home because it was inspiring all sorts of people back in America to realize that if they can do these kinds of things, then clearly I can too, because there was nothing special about us. Um, so that, yeah, that, that really got us kind of down that journey. Um, I encourage anybody and everybody who's listening or watching this to go find the find the find yeah. is the name of the show and they can yeah. find that the find show.com the find show.com and yeah. can i just tell you friends i don't know if it's free or if you have to pay for it if you got to pay for it just pay for it because it will bless you immensely trust me when i tell you that their story that they chose to be a part of and say yes to is so inspiring because you guys were in africa and then you went to I want to say Nicaragua? Yeah, well, so then we basically realized, like, during our time working there, we met so many people all over the world who would reach out to us and say, hey, how are you doing this? And where have you, you know, how are you shipping products back and forth? How are you doing all these things? And we realized, like, oh, there are way more people around the world doing this. So, yeah, we spent a few years traveling the whole world with phone crews telling these stories of people who were doing things way cooler than us. Yeah, so we were in India for a season. We were in Nicaragua for a season. We even did one in America in Detroit, told seven or eight stories throughout Detroit, really just like looking for the good news wherever we could find it ultimately. Yeah, I liken it to, I think it is, I should have probably thought about this before I mentioned it, but um, Mike Rowe, he did this like short term documentary, like giving back or something. Very similar, yep. Yeah. yeah, very similar. I mean, I love what you guys did in Detroit. I mean, okay. that was so touching, man. Like, this is the way I see it, man, is, is you guys are doing exactly what Jesus would have done. Mm. Jesus, well, I was going to say Jesus wouldn't go to L.A., but L.A. needs probably more help than even Detroit. But yeah. Jesus didn't go to the shiny places and the fancy places. He went to uh, the difficult people the people yeah. who were hurting, the people who were different from us and marginalized. And you guys have done a great way of going into those communities and actually helping them see the hope that's right in front of them. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's been our hope all along. So have you seen Free Burma Rangers yet? Oh my gosh. Yes. We love it. We went to the theaters and watched it when it came out. Yes. I remember when it first came out in little old Livingston, Montana, the closest theater was three hours away. Um, and so we missed it. And then on their Facebook page, they showed it for free a couple Saturdays ago. I, I saw that, man. And man, I called the whole family down and nobody left the TV until it was done. And I, I think that all of us whew, <laughs> had tears in our eyes as we watched that show. Oh. How could you not, right? How inspiring is it as they invite their kids, especially, into a bigger story like that? Like, I'm so excited to see what those kids of that family will end up doing with their life and are already doing. Right. That's the crazy thing. And that's the thing, you know, like, okay, so this guy used to be a ranger and he wants to go for social justice and, and, and I get that. Um, but then it's not only that he meets this gal and they have kids and they take the whole family, like young kids um, to the middle of the jungle to help yeah. these oppressed people. And my goodness, I think it's easy to look at that and be like, what am I doing in Livingston? You know, cause I really did. I wrestled with this after I watched that movie. I'm like, what am I doing in Livingston? like sharing the good news of people and most of them don't even want to hear it. And I could be in the jungle right now or in Iraq helping people, but I really felt God say, Bryce, I got you right where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think the point of the find, I don't think the point of free Burma Rangers is to say you could be doing more, you silly Christian. Yeah. I think it's just to inspire us to do what God is calling us to do. 
Yeah, and that's the thing is for their story specifically, that's what they heard God tell them to do. And so they would be they would be not listening to that voice if they went somewhere else and maybe even somewhere else that looked crazier or more far off and would have looked better to the world, right? And it's like, no, actually, sometimes the hardest thing is to stay where you are, right? Because there's so much of you wants that adventure. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think I watched that and I was just as moved as you were. And we have a handful of, we know one of the producers on it and it met a few of the people involved in that project. And man, I'll just tell you, like it, yeah, it moved us too. I was in tears multiple times and just so inspired that a normal family like that can go do amazing things with their life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm learning uh, raising kids is um, I never saw my dad cry. Hmm. Never. Even at my grandmother's funeral, whom I love deeply, did I not see him cry. Hmm. Um, my kids make fun of me now. Are you crying, dad? Yes. Jeremy Camp's <laughs> wife just died. Why wouldn't you be crying? <laughs> Another yeah. amazing movie. It's really true. I'm very much like that. And I was similar. Yeah, I think the whole generation before us just didn't do that, right? It was like, a, it was very rare that you would see them have show any emotion. And because of that, you know, you would see that as weakness, right? Growing up. And it's, of course, it's not at all. Um, not even a little. True. Yeah. I just, I, I just going back to what you're saying is like, I think we learned at an early age that so many of the people around us thought that once you had kids, that meant those dreams you had needed to be put on hold till it was, till they were gone or you retire or whatever the thing is that we build in our head or, or once money's good or once, and then when you have kids, you realize actually none of that's ever actually going to happen. So right. you either put life on pause for a period of time or you actually just bring them along. And I don't think people realize how much that speaks to them and to their kid to their kids um and often those kids won't be able to put language to that till they're adults like your kids probably can't necessarily tell you you moving and doing all that you're done really means to them at like a core level yet but when they're 25 it may actually mean something a lot more than you even know right yeah man that's so true um and and just like now even it's not so much even bringing your kids along like part of the move to LA is for your kids yeah yeah that's the weirder part I think is like as now they're becoming teenagers we told them they could do anything we told them to listen to God's voice we told them to go use their life for more and then they're coming to us for years our daughter has been coming saying I think God's telling us to move to LA and we're like no freaking way Wow. Like, great. I like that. That's cute. And maybe for you when you're older. And then, of course, we're like, oh, yeah, we've been telling him to listen to God's voice. And now they do and we don't listen. So this is us going, yeah, well, crap, here we go. I guess we need to listen to the thing we've been preaching to them. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, That's so good. And my internet's freezing up in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> Dave, come back. Come back to the light. No. Well, let's see if he comes back. Hey, another thing that uh, Dave and his wife Morgan have been a part of is their own podcast. And he's back. Is he there? Is it recording I still? I hope so. It hey, this is great because I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to roll with the punches. So, well, he froze up again. I'm going to blame it on his internet, not mine. Is it? Yay! Hey, <laughs> hey. There. Okay. I don't think it's my internet. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm at, I'm on the church internet. This internet is not very good over here. So um, okay. that's why I chose to sit behind this bookcase. Cause it just makes me look smart. It's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah, I was, I was saying that you and your wife Morgan have, have been the star of your own podcast. Yes. Um, I think it was called chasing unicorns. Yep. Exactly. Hey, that, remember. remember guys, this is a guy who wore skinny jeans and V necks with his hipster haircut. So chasing unicorns, it all makes sense now, right? It's adding up. It does. 
it all it all adds up for sure. Yeah, and that podcast was all about again chasing those big things with your life, um, and and then all the other things that make up, uh, yeah, this crazy life that we've we've chosen to live. Yeah, and not to hand out too many resources in one podcast, but if you want an inspiring po podcast, if you or you and your family are thinking about like, man, should I really go after this dream? Check out um, the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, you can find it anywhere that podcasts are at. Yeah, Chasing Unicorns. Yep, that's right. Yeah, well, yeah. that's great. Man, you know what, Dave? There's so much more to talk about, um, but you know what? We can reserve that for part two. I would love it. JP with friends. Um, tell us something that you and your family have learned during uh, this epidemic, during COVID and isolation and not being able to go to your church family. Tell us one thing that you as a family or you personally have pulled out of this. Uh, probably like a lot of people, getting to slow down, uh, even when they're really good things we've chosen to do with our evenings and our days and running kids around to acting lessons and not having that, getting that all stripped away. Uh, for one, we've learned like we actually do like hanging out as a family. That's nice. <laughs> we really do. Um, and then I think too, like a little bit of that grieving is there as well. Like at the same time, we're grateful and it's been really good. I think the grieving of like, oh, there's a lot of things about relationships and, and friends that when you don't have it, um, yeah, life doesn't quite have the same thing. Like you definitely miss it. Like I, I guess I would just say, we, I don't think we realized what we'd miss until you're in it. And you realize like, oh, there's some relationships that we don't get to be around. And those added a lot of value to our life, apparently. And it's easy to take those for granted. Yeah, I know that there's this big push. To, um, you guys are in California, and I'm sorry about that. But <laughs> <laughs> that state is just a mess. And everyone's <laughs> rushing to open everything back up. Uh, we learn we we really liked going out to eat. Like we just enjoyed this small community here and supporting our local businesses. And so yeah. now that we've been out of church for 10 weeks now, everyone's chomping at the bit to get back into the game. And my caution is, man, friends, let's just slow down. Maybe normal wasn't working. Yeah. Maybe, maybe God's fingerprint is on all of this. Not that he caused it or whatever, but uh, maybe his fingerprint is on all of this so that we could slow down. Yeah. And let's not just turn around and go right back to normal. Like, yeah. there's a new normal that I think is going to be um, realized for a lot of us and for our families. Like, oh, it is actually nice to hang out with each other. I actually enjoy having dinner. Yeah. Family. So... Yeah, I would agree. I hope I hope that's the case. It's the thing we learned after we, we lived in Africa and worked there for years. When we came back, there were so many things about life there that were really hard, but there were things about it that when we came back, we missed. You know, things like not having electricity a lot of days, not having running water, not having, like, in it, those, they were horrible, and I hated it, and it was annoying. And then we got here, we re got back to America, and all of it's here. We just realized, oh, we actually really appreciated those times because we spent way more time together because that's all you could do. Hey, so in closing, tell us what's happening in LA. Why, why are we going there? Is that what you're saying? What's, what's the draw? Yeah. Well, to be real honest, uh, we had one given day where all four of us, my two kids and my wife and I all heard God separately tell us to move to LA. So it was a more like, Oh crap. Now we got to do it. Um, but both my wife and I have been working on a handful of films and stories and um, projects that we, we think can happen much easier there. Um, our son and daughter both want to act and they've been doing auditions remotely or driving and it just gets crazy. Our daughter wants to model and that those are possibilities are there, agencies are there. So I think all four of our dreams are wrapped up in this place. And I would just say like, everybody has told us like how horrible it's going to be and how it's like this dark pit. And, and yes, I know that's true, but I also believe that like, yeah, we're there for a reason as well. And we get to be us wherever we go and, uh, and we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. 
hey, I know from experience that you guys bring the light wherever you go. Yeah. Uh, so I just pray God's peace and protection over you and your family. I know that great things are going to come out of your guys' presence in LA, and I'm excited for you guys. I can't Thank wait you. to see what you guys are putting out. Thank you so much. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all that you've done. I talk about you often. Hey, uh, friends, you can be on the Joshua Project podcast too. Just get a hold of us, make a comment, or hit me up if you know how to do that. But until next time, friends, be well and take care of one another.